The Rosinante has been tapped to serve as mediators in the conflict between RCE's scientific and corporate settlement and the former Ganymede refugees who have established a colony here. There's a whole planet here, but the spot where first landing, the Belter colony, was established is also where the highest concentration of the lithium is. Hence, this isn't just about real estate, this is about mineral rights. For both sides, the lithium represents survival. It will finance their endeavors here, and thus, both sides want to control it. It will be Holden's job to sort that out. But things aren't that simple. What had been intended as a sabotage of RCE's efforts to establish a foothold has turned into an attack, and old habits die hard. With former hardline OPA like Coop and Kate among their ranks, the idea that this is another war comes easily. The old war boots are just so comfortable and they fit so well, it's hard not to put them back on again. This isn't discussed directly, but in a place where nothing is edible and the future is uncertain, having the old familiar thing to fall back upon can provide the sense of control that one often needs in a crisis. Sadly, sometimes comfort can be found in hating someone else. So the Cabal wipes out a group of RCE security. The fig leaf is that they need to destroy physical evidence about the bombing that links back to them, but they went there knowing that they'd be killing those people, and most were hoping for the opportunity. Baja wasn't, and only fails because he doesn't know how to use the gun, actually, and never successfully fires it. But nevertheless, this raises the stakes. They've gone from unintended killing to effectively premeditated murder here and they hide the bodies so that they can pretend that those people are just missing. Hey, alien planet, it can happen. And yet this further escalation continues to make matters worse. The first incident, the bombing, killed the governor who could have prevented the need for any mediator. Instead, when one kills the civilian head of state, usually the head of the military will step in to seize control, and that's Murtry. He ramped up the corporate security presence on the planet in response but now that a significant number of his people were again killed, virtually all of the rest of them, including Murtry, arrive on the planet in response. When Holden arrives, Murtry has declared martial law, as permitted by the Charter. Holden is aghast at the situation, but that's because he's unaware of what he stepped into. Murtry recognized, quite correctly, that the Cabal had declared war on them, and so was treating it as a war. Holden thought he was negotiating rights and compromises, but this is in fact a situation that he cannot mediate because, again, it's a war, and one where only one side comes to the table. The other side is plotting in secret. Thus, he's aghast over what happens when Coop, head of the Cabal, saunters over to Murtry and acts like a jackass. The reason that Coop does this is reflected in what Havelock is dealing with back on the Israel. Havelock worked a lot of jobs where he was one of a few, if not the only, Earther surrounded by Belters. And in his experience, they enjoyed treating him as an outsider, or as someone to be hated, and even flat out told that he was inferior. Being treated that way so often naturally breeds some resentment towards Belters for mistreating him, who were doing so because of the way Earth had mistreated them. The majority wield social power and can make the minority's life difficult in a thousand small ways. Thus, when one finds oneself back in the majority again, and one's former oppressors are the minority, the temptation is to turn the tables on them, even if those that are being turned upon were never one of the oppressors in the first place. Thus, when one of the scientists, a belter on a mostly earther ship, complains about someone urinating in his locker three times, Havelock has to struggle to not fall into the comfortable trap of letting the belter feel his suffering, feel how it is to be treated like dirt for an accident of birth. He manages to see past it, though, and tells people to stop it, to not look at their fellow crew members as the enemy that they're fighting down on the planet, to resist the comfort of majority. The comfort of majority is why Coop thinks that he can safely head right up to Murtry and taunt him can issue a veiled threat even, because there's all these belters right behind him and Murtry can't prove a damn thing, can't even prove that his people are dead. But Coop has made a mistake. The majority is only a social tool, and however strong it is, 
It's not strong enough to stop a bullet. When Murtry, again correctly, interprets Coop's words as a threat, he kills him in front of everyone while Holden is standing right there. Now Holden, also correctly, interprets Murtry's behavior as a direct challenge to his authority here, and to save face, publicly refers to him as a murderer who will have to face justice for what he's done, and even insults him by calling him a rent-a-cop, despite the fact that he is going to need to be dealing with Murtry as the representative for RCE interests in official discourse. Now this, of course, is Murtry's own fault for turning the mediator against him. And now the Cabal, having been shocked that their leader could be brazenly gunned down in the street, is plotting revenge. Baja tries to persuade them to reconsider that, after all, they spilled blood first. They killed a lot more of the RCE than the RCE did of them, and Murtry just made the colonists look like oppressed victims in front of the official mediator. Action would only succeed in making things worse. But when Holden agrees to RCE's demand that the mining explosives be kept under tight control to ensure that they're not again weaponized, the Cabal take that as proof that diplomacy will fail and that the only answer is to eliminate all their enemies, including Holden. As I said last time, if you're not 100% with us, then you're on their side. This is when we can clearly see how tribalism and the old war boots warp our judgment, that this belief of us and them is so incredibly dangerous, not just to those we oppose, but to everyone. Kate lays out the plan to the Cabal and details how they will simultaneously eliminate all of the local threats, and after that, dig in for the long haul should further efforts be needed in order to pull this off. More and more convinced that this is right, that they must fight for this colony and win it by any means necessary. And soon that takes on a literal aspect. When Baja points out that killing Holden may provoke his crew into retaliating with their warship, Kate says it's something they should hope happens. The image of dead colonists will win the PR battle and make victory even easier for them. Baja has to point out that those dead bodies are going to be their friends and family, not abstract strangers that you could write off as acceptable losses. To protect their people, the Cabal is hoping that someone will come along and kill them, to literally burn the village to save it. They are fighting so hard to hold on to their land, forgetting that once they're done, every person will only require exactly two and a half feet by eight feet, the size of a grave. Baja can't go along with this, and after prompting from his wife, informs Holden, who in turn tells Murtry and Carol, the administrator of the colony. Carol, to show the continued problem of tribalism, objects to the use of the word murder despite the fact that the definition of murder is the unlawful, premeditated killing of one human being by another. But the word game is another common tactic that we employ. We use it to rationalize the way the sins of my side while amplifying those of the other. It's so common a tactic, I can't actually give you a real-world example without provoking someone. So I will just use this situation here to illustrate and save you the trouble of sending me hate mail. If someone kills one of yours... That's murder. No, no matter what the circumstances, they could have a knife to the other person's throat and it's still murder. If they kill three or more of yours under any circumstances, that's a massacre. Ten or more, that's a genocide. But if my side meticulously plans to kill multiple unarmed people, that's not murder. That's self-defense. It has to be because my side are the good guys and only do good guy things. And anything you think might be bad is only done because the other side made me do it. That's the problem here, the cycle. One side does something, the other side uses that to justify their reaction, which is used to justify the next action by the other side, and on and on and on. Havelock and the Belters, a cycle. Destroying the landing pad, Belters retaliating against corporate oppressors. Murtry retaliating to a few terrorists with martial law and preemptive response to threats. Holden responding to Murtry and R.C. as corporate bullies because of that reaction. The problem here is that everyone can point to someone else and say, they started it. 
and will happily keep right on going until someone comes along and finds the last two people dead with their hands around each other's throats. It takes someone like Havelock, who is willing to break the cycle, to try to stop that from happening. But that, after all, is his job, keeping the peace. Murtry, though, is in a war, and when Holden informs him and Carol about the attack, Murtry has already learned about it, actually, and has been preparing his response. With the exception of Baja, all the members of the Cabal are killed in a firefight, somewhat literally as the house catches on fire, possibly because of the explosives acting as an accelerant. It doesn't really matter how, though, the grisly business is done. Coop, Kate, and the others wanted a war, and they got one. But they never considered the possibility that they might lose. But they've never declared war on a psychopath before. That was their mistake that there was someone who was prepared to go as far as they were. All the revolution succeeded in doing now was ensuring that the most dangerous person on the planet was the one in charge now. <laughs>